And so I said, uh, are you guys in a small group? They said, yeah, we started a small group, but you're so busy. We just didn't even ask. And I was crushed. I mean, you think, my goodness, lady, you're in your fifties. Like you don't need, you're not in seventh grade anymore. It's okay. You can get over it. It rocked me. So I sat down with a couple of them and said, here's the deal. I'm actually thrilled that you're in small group. I want you to have community. And I also am sad that you don't know me well enough to know that I would root for that for you. But why didn't you ask me? Hey there, you're listening to the Girls Talking Life podcast, and I'm your host, Johanna. If you're like me, you love time with friends. I always leave feeling encouraged, inspired to try something different, or I've learned something new. So why not continue to grow even when we can't be with our girlfriends? We're not made to do life on our own. So on each episode of this show, I'll bring you a girl and her story to give you refreshing ideas to stir your soul. Let's walk this road together. Are you ready to talk life? Hey friend, you are listening to episode number 107 of the Girls Talking Life podcast. February is International Friendship Month, so I would be remiss if I didn't bring you a show on this topic. We've covered friendship from a lot of different angles, but today's episode is going to be a little different. Today we are talking about being hurt in friendship, because unless you've been living under a rock, I'm pretty sure you have been hurt by a friend sometime in your life. And while today's show isn't going to magically protect you from all future friendship hurt, Amberly Niece is here to talk about finding safe friends and being a safe place for our people to land. Amberly is a popular speaker and teacher, comedian, author, and all-around encourager dedicated to helping you become the joyful person you were created to be. Her Bible studies include The Belonging Project, Finding Your Tribe, and Learning to Thrive and Common Ground, Loving Others Despite Our Differences. And her devotional is The Friendship Initiative, 31 Days of Loving and Connecting Like Jesus. Everything she and I talk about can be found on girlstalkinglife.com. Here is my conversation with Amberly. Amberly Niece, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, I am so excited to be here. Let's just start with a little bit of an introduction. Who are you? What do we need to know? Is this my existential like crisis question or <laughs> okay, just kidding. Uh, I I'm Amberly Niece. I am a speaker, an author, a college professor, a crazy uh crazy happy mom, wife, uh and Cowboys fan, which by the time this podcast is a reality, the sting will have uh subsided a bit, but my my boys lost their opportunity to go into the playoffs last night, and there was a great sadness in my land. That's all I have to say. Yes, I am sorry I saw that loss. Amberly, you are a comedian mm-hmm. and a Bible teacher, as well as many other things. I am, which sounds like a dichotomy of terms, I know, but somehow that's what the Lord has called me to. <laughs> I would love to know how you ended up as a comedian, and then, yeah, how does that go together with teaching the Bible? I love that. So that was never my plan. It was never, that was never the goal for me. Uh, Some people uh, see a, a, you know, a a comedian that inspires them and thinks that's, you know, like sign me up for that. That's what I want. That was never, ever my goal, mostly because I think sometimes with comedians, we, we enter in to the comedy club or to the organization event or to the church and kind of cross our arms, like, all right, funny person, you know, do your thing. However, I continued to have people encourage me as a speaker. You're hilarious. Have you ever thought of comedy? And I think, no, 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 no. I like to tell, you know, humorous stories, but I'm not a comedian. And finally, someone said, it will allow you to be in places that uh, you never had before. And you really should pray about it. And I did. And a company called and asked if I would consider being on their comedy tour. And we, my husband and I both felt like, Okay, so I guess we're going to try this thing. And it's been joyful. I really love it. I'm on two tours right now, Marriage Date Night and uh, Aspire Women's Events. And I do comedy for both of them. And I I feel so blessed to be able to do that. I mean, obviously, the joy of the Lord is our, should be our strength. But the fact that I get to encourage other believers uh, to do that, I think is fantastic. As well as I love the Bible. And I feel like it is the... Uh, genesis of our 
of our joy outside of a relationship with Christ. And so it just seemed, it seemed like the perfect marriage to other people. It seems wonky, but for me, it's the way that it, it's always been due to a kind of tumultuous childhood. I w- I became a storyteller and a levity bringer uh, from a very young age. So the fact that when I became a Christian, God could redeem that and use it for his glory is pretty fantastic. So yeah, so that's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> it is amazing. And I love that God called you in that unique way and that you mm-hmm. stepped into it boldly to uh, bring joy, not only for yourself, but to the people who listen to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been, I've been a speaker for 25 years. And so when somebody approached me, I thought, oh no, no, this would make me nervous. And they're like, you've been speaking for 25 years. This, this is, this is going to be a walk in the park and it's not a walk in the park, but I sure enjoy it. Well, I have heard you share a story about being hurt early on in friendship. And in addition to the things we mentioned, you've also written several books, and some of them are on this topic of friendship. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing that story with us? Sure. So I'm sad to say that when you when you bring up that question, I actually have a plethora of examples that go through my head. I wish that I could say I have had a lifetime of glorious friendships with no drama and no issues. Uh, but that is just not true. And actually, if it's okay with you, I'd, I'd rather tell a story that happened fairly recently to me, which was we moved to a new community in a totally different state, and I wanted friendships. I did not see friendships modeled beautifully by my mom or my grandmother. I never, I didn't like understand girl friendships, how those things worked. And so I first moved here and a group of ladies kind of took me on, which was very kind of them. And, uh, and we did, we did life kind of parallel to one another. We didn't really do life together, but we did life, uh, parallel. And then I remember the day that one of them was with me on a speaking engagement. And I really felt like, okay, I think this might be in. I might have the VIP pass to the cool girl table. And I was watching on social media. And one of the ladies from the group says to this person that's with me, man, we're going to really miss you in small group. And so I said, "Uh, are you guys in a small group? They said, yeah, we started a small group, but you're so busy. We just didn't even ask. And Mm -hmm. I was crushed. I mean, you think, my goodness, lady, you're in your 50s. Like, you don't need, you're not in seventh grade anymore. It's okay. You can get over it. It rocked me. So I sat down with a couple of them and said, here's the deal. I'm actually thrilled that you're in small group. I want you to have community. And I also am sad that you don't know me well enough to know that I would root for that for you. But why didn't you ask me? And they're, they hemmed and hawed. But the truth is, I knew at that point, you know what? I can love these people and I can be so thankful for the manna they were in a certain season of my life. But I need to, I need to find people who choose me and I choose them. And since that time, I have indeed found that. I was telling uh, my nephew yesterday, we have an adult nephew who was saying, so tell me your people, like, tell me about the, these friends. And I said, we are ragtag. We are like the island of misfit toys. And we are all over the map. Uh, we do different jobs. We have different passion areas, but we really choose each other and we root for one another's rise. And it may not look exactly like the Acts 2 church where they did everything together, but when stuff happens in our lives, they are the people I can turn to and they will drop things and be a part of it. And it's, it's, I mean, we have like a life coach and a bank manager and a sales rock star and a fundraising, you know, guru. I'm, we have a, a dance teacher, dance instructor. And no, that's not me. I know that's shocking that the dance instructor is not me, but we're just all over the map and we can really cheer one another on. And I feel like more people need that. If we look at the statistics, as you know, you know, 61% of people admit to being lonely in America. That was in January of 2020, before even COVID, before we were isolated. And about that same percentage don't feel like they have anyone that they can tell their deep, dark secrets to. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's hard for me because I feel so blessed uh, to say, I, indeed, I have that. And so, um, so anyway, that's, that's how that works. Hearing you say that you were not invited to the small group, that just hurts my heart because 
I've experienced that too. And I could tell you several stories back, you know, the same, Mm. just rejection. That's what that feels like. Even if it isn't intentional, that's what it feels like. Absolutely. I don't think, I don't think anybody was trying to be mean, but man, it sure felt personal. It sure felt mean when it happened. And so anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you can relate to that. I'm sorry. That's a hashtag relatable for you because the truth is it's no fun, but I think more than not, people have a, a similar experience at some time in their life. And so what we do with that is going to, I feel like, make such a difference. With so many lonely people, can you imagine if the churches that you know follow Jesus would take friendship and community and really practice that and really live it out? you know, extend hospitality and serve their community. Can you imagine the impact that we would have? I agree. So what if you're in this place of like, yeah, Amberly, that's happened to me before. And I don't want to go through that again. Mm. How do you move past that fear? I think that that's a good question. I think honestly, that it starts with seeking the face of God when it comes to taking responsibility for anything you need to make right. So I think I think mending some of the some of the issues from the past I think is really important whether the people are still around or still alive or not but really kind of making peace with what that looks like and then kind of figure out like grapple with the holy spirit what is it that I need when it comes to community what does that look like um do I need to find people who are passionate about the same things I am do I need to join a hiking group and, and you know facebook group in my area do I need to find people who are going to spur me on toward love and good deeds? Do I need to get more actively involved? But the big one for me is where can I serve? Because when we serve, it sounds like a super churchy thing, but the truth is when we serve in the areas that we're passionate about, things that we really care about, we are more attractive to people. And I don't mean like we lose, you know, um, any extra weight that we're carrying or we, you know, uh, our skin clears up. We just become truly attractional when we're serving the Lord in whatever capacity. It doesn't even have to be for a church. When we're serving and doing things we're passionate about, you know, fighting for things we are passionate about, we are more, we're more attractional when that happens. And I think sadly, most of us are just like, we're, we're waiting for somebody to come and find us. My, our sweet son, he's graduated now from high school, but I remember his junior year where I said, well, brother, you know, prom's coming up. Are you going to invite anybody? He said, no. And I said, really? He said, well, nobody's invited me. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, but you can't feel sad that nobody's invited you if you haven't put yourself out there and been vulnerable and said, hey, uh, I look pretty good into tux. You want to go to, you know, or whatever, whatever the thing is. So I think too many of us are waiting for others. And I say, let's not wait. Let's go and serve. Let's do things that make us happy. Let's not, and I don't just mean follow the happy, but I'm saying the things that if you're passionate about dogs, maybe it's, you know, volunteering for the Humane Society in your area, or if it's ministering to the disenfranchised, you know, volunteer your time for uh, shelters for women and children or whatever it happens to be, do those things. And I truly believe uh, God will send people who have very similar passion areas, and we have then we have a connection that is really undeniable. I love that. What a great lens to view friendship. So good. I'm glad. Thank you. You talk about friendship levels. Mm. Ten friends, seven friends. Yes. What does that mean? So this is going to sound superficial. And so you can judge you McJudgerton me all that you want because it, it does sound this way. But hear my heart when I say this. I, by nature, I'm that person that sometimes over trusts too quickly, right? So um, some people would say that's naive. Some people would say that's just foolishness uh, or not being very wise. But the truth is one of the greatest strengths I bring is that I love people well and I'm unabashed in my love for them. But in the process, I have had a few hiccups relationally. And so very early on, one of the wisest things my mom ever said, and I totally gave the same speech to my daughter, was we have you have to recognize, and it's not a bad thing, but you have to recognize there are some people in your life who they are a 10 friend. And what I mean by 10 is It means that they show up for you. It means that they root for your rise. It means that they support you. They also, also what I call love and shove you, which means 
They love you where you're at, but they shove you, encourage you, spur you on towards something greater. They really work in your best interest. They love you at the greatest sense of what that means. And we're blessed if we have a 10 friend. Seven friends are awesome. We're super fun to be with. And they know some of your stuff. You might be able to share some of your secrets with them. But for the most part, they're just they're just good people. And they're fun to be with. And that's great. And that's not a bad thing. You just know, you know what? We don't have this thing in common. Or, uh, you know, we can't talk politics. We can't talk deep spiritual things without somebody getting their feelings hurt. You know what? They're fun, but they're seven. You have fives who are really superficial. Uh, again, super fun. You're not sharing any secrets with them. Um, maybe they've shown themselves to not be worthy of sharing those secrets. Or maybe you just don't know them well enough. My problem is I would give 10 type of information to fives too often because I wanted to connect, right? Uh, and then threes are people who've just proven themselves unable and unwilling to work in your best interest, right? And we have people, uh, we all have those people where we're like, oh, yep, that person's a 10. Ooh, that person is a three. And I'm praying for them, but I'm certainly not going to tell my deepest, darkest secrets. And so my problem came when I was entrusting 10 type of information and secrets to people who are just not safe and just couldn't, it's nothing against them. They just weren't on my team. And I ended up getting hurt in the process. And so my mom gave me this great wise information. And then my daughter had the same thing. She had somebody bully her on TikTok, which was glorious. I've never like wanted to say unkind things about a, a child ever in my life. I know she was 16, but this person was bothering my daughter. And she admitted, you know what? I told her stuff that was like deep in my heart because I thought she was safe. And now she's touting it for the world to see on TikTok. And so after she canceled her TikTok account, uh, we had the conversation of, well, who deserves your heart? Who deserves your secrets? Who deserves your, your innermost thoughts? You know, people who are safe, 10 friends. So what does that look like? And so we had a good conversation about what, what a 10 looks like in your life may be different than what a 10 looks like in my life, but it comes down to, are they working in your best interest? Do they love you enough to, to point things out when you need help, but also to um, rub your head and uh, wipe your tears when it's, when it's rough. And so I think again, um, to be a safe place for somebody is such an honor. We can't be 10 friends for everybody we meet. We just can't believe me. I've tried <laughs> and it doesn't work out, but we certainly can invest more deeply and more lovingly into the relationships we do have and be more discerning in the process. What a great conversation and lesson to have with your daughter. I'm sorry that happened to her, but what a great, Thank what you. a great lesson. Thank you. She is a wiser friend. I mean, she is, it was stinky at the time, but she is a wiser, better friend than she was the, you know, those few years ago. Would you say that as the number goes down, that the number of people in our lives goes up. So like, we're only going to have a couple, 10 friends, sevens, more, threes, yes. more. Absolutely. And in fact, if that is an inverted pyramid, either we're not reaching out and, and leaving our comfort zones and often enough, or we may be giving information to people who really don't deserve it. So I think that is a beautiful visual. Yes, it's kind of like the food pyramid, which I never follow, but I know what it looks like. That kind of friendship pyramid, I think is a great way of, of looking at it. I am interrupting the conversation really quick to tell you about today's sponsor. Did you know the Easter season is almost here? Lent begins on February 22nd. I attended a wellness training for work recently, and the leader talked about how despair is on the rise. Despair means the absence of hope. The leader went on to talk about ways to grasp onto hope as if it were a thing, but I know that hope is found in the person of Jesus. If you are looking for a way to connect with that hope and to focus on Jesus as we approach the Easter season, consider reading Easter Matters, How the Resurrection of Jesus Changes You. Easter Matters is a devotional written by Anna Nash and Katie Shelton, where you'll explore the 21 chapters in the Gospel of John. They'll walk you through the way Jesus related to those around him, and you will see pictures of the way he relates to us and daily defines us. You might remember Anna Nash from episode 76, where she and I chatted about Christmas. 
or from the bonus episode, Girls Talking Easter, where Anna shares what readers can expect from this book. Catch either of those episodes and order your copy of Easter Matters. It's available all the places books are sold, and I have a direct link for you right in the show notes. Now back to my conversation. So we have these 10 friends, and with that comes this deep connection. Mm. Why is that so good for our souls? Well, I truly believe that we were created for a community. It's yeah. part of the uh, the benefit package of being a child created in God's image. God himself, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is in community. So when we were created, we were created for this community. And so when we find that and we thrive in that, we, I feel like, uh, learn to look more like Jesus in the process. And Song of Solomon tells us one, uh, two is better than one because they have better return on their work. It's better for our hearts, but it's also better for our productivity, for our connectedness, for our effectiveness. I really, truly believe we were made for community. And when we don't have that, it's not that we can't be effective, but we are missing out on some of the most powerful sharpening and eroding that the Holy Spirit needs to do to draw us to him. So I don't believe, I truly do not believe that a person can be both a hermit and fully live out the Christian life. Has so many of those. I One of my Bible studies that I wrote actually right before COVID, like I wrote it before COVID thinking this is going to be so great, such a timely word for me and for the church, all the one another's in the New Testament. I mean, this is going to be brilliant. And it comes out May of 2020. So it was oh. either like the best timing ever in the history of the Christian church, or it was uh, sad and hilarious. But, you know, we, we are called to live out those one another's in the New Testament. And there are, there's at least one for every week um, for us to practice. And I think it's because it makes us stronger and bigger and faster spiritually, and it builds the body. And uh, so it helps fulfill that great commission that we're all called to. Give us an example or two of the one another's. Whew. So love, love one another, pray for one another, spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Um, one of the most convicting for me in that particular study was practice hospitality with one another. And I've always felt like, oh no, you know, hospitality is for people who are better cooks and who have cleaner houses and better behaved children. And, you know, it's for somebody else. And the truth is that uh, hospitality comes from the root word, the same root word as hospital. And the New Testament church would set up these safe houses in the most treacherous of like travel destinations or on the path on these travels where it was really dangerous. And they would set up these things called hospitals and had very little to do with medical care. Maybe you would need a little bit of help, but for the most part, it was designed to be a safe place for people's journey. And for me, that was really convicting because my my question of myself is, am I there for people when they're having a rough time on their journey? Am I a safe place that they can come to? I won't share their secrets. I won't judge. I won't do anything but just love them well and, you know, maybe put a little bit of ointment uh, uh, spiritually on some of the things that they're struggling with. And we're called to do that. That is what we're called to do as followers of Jesus is to to practice hospitality. And it doesn't have to be in your home. That could be at a jack in the box in the drive through That's what, if that's what God has called you to do. So what that looks like looks a little bit different for everyone, but uh, we still are called to it. That is a beautiful picture. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So I surveyed some women and said, what is the biggest struggle that you have in your adult female friendships? Mm. And the number one answer Mm -hmm. The number one answer was time, making time to invest. That's really good. Are you expecting me to come up with something brilliant that I can uh, help with? <laughs> yes, I am. What do you have for us? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's brilliant, but it has. it's worked for me. In order to record this podcast, you and I had to have a conversation and we had to come up with a mutually exclusive time and both of us put it on our Google Calendar and we made it a priority. I couldn't wait to have this conversation with you. I was so excited to spend the time with you. And I communicated that in two ways. I showed up when we said we were going to show up, but I put it on my calendar to begin with. 
And I think most of us, life just passes us by and we say, you know, like, I just don't have time. No, we don't make time. Again, I work for two universities as a full-time college professor. I, I speak and I write and I do comedy. I'm plenty busy, but I, the Lord has shown me my need for that community. And so I put it on the calendar. I have girlfriends and sometimes they, the, my group of, of cronies, they meet and I'm not available and that's okay. But when we say, Hey, in March on this particular day, we're going to have some brunch. It, I, I protect that. Like I do any podcast recording or um, any other meeting that I have with students because it's that important. Those be, they're worth it. And so am I because I need it. Again, it sounds so trite, like, well, if it's important, you'll make it a priority. But the truth is, if it's important, you'll make it a priority. And you just need to not be unreasonable in your expectations. Maybe you can't afford to go away with your girlfriends every weekend. But if you can find a mutually exclusive or mutually beneficial time and you put it on the calendar, you protect it. Too many of us are like, oh, well, it's just it's just my time with my friend. It's not a big deal. We're just going to meet for coffee. That is such a life-giving time oftentimes, and we need to protect it accordingly. Absolutely. I get together with a group of women, and we meet monthly. Ooh. And I am the organizer of that group, so I have those dates ready to go. Everybody knows when we're meeting. Yes. Usually, all of us can make it. Once in a while, they can't, but they know the date. And I know that they protect it like I do on my calendar. And it has been a magical time. You talked about, you know, needing that connection, needing that time with your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we don't even know necessarily what we're missing until we go and we get it. (sighs) Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. You have a new book coming out. I do. I do. I do. I'm so excited. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what it is going to entail? Yeah. So it's a six week Bible study. It has a, the study itself. And then there's a leader's guide, um, as well as a DVD collection that goes with it. So if you're one of those people that would like to do some teaching, uh, or li- like to do the study, but you need the teaching, I've recorded those as well. It's called Untangling Faith. And essentially it is how we can take the questions of Jesus in the New Testament. And by the way, he asked over 300 questions in the New Testament and he only answered three of them like outright. Wow. And so it's how do we find hope and glean great insight on the character of God by looking at those questions. And so does it sound like finding the answers to your questions by looking at more questions? And the answer is yes. Uh, but that's what, that's what we're looking at. So it's a wonderful exploration. Every single day is a different question that Jesus asked things like, do you want to get well, or who do you say that I am? And, uh, really unpacks, navigates some of life's biggest questions, like uh, some of faith's biggest questions. I have so many cronies who are struggling with their faith right now. And I wanted a practical, like, how can we kind of journey through this together? First of all, I gave them permission to ask questions, which many people don't feel like you should do uh, when it comes to God. But I'm like, oh, no, he's a big boy. He can take our questions. Mm -hmm. But also, um, you know, to be able to grapple together, to uh, co-journey with somebody, not necessarily as the Sherpa, but as the the co-journey person, uh, and just walk alongside them and love them well. That's the That's the whole idea of the study. So it's called Untangling Faith, and I'm so excited about it. I feel so blessed that the Lord allowed me to write it and allowed me to grapple with some of these issues myself. So good. And it is out in April? It is, middle of April. So just about the time you are turning in your taxes, go Amazon, Coke, Spirit, any of those things, and get Untangling Faith. And again, there's there's a participant's guide, which you can do by yourself, but obviously I feel like community is better. There's a leader's guide that you can purchase as well as uh, six DVDs that go along with each week. Fantastic. Next up is something I ask all my guests. I know. I love this. I have to say, I, this was so hard for me. I went, when you, when I read it, it's like five things that you're really liking right now. And I thought, oh, that's not hard. And then holy kingfish, it was harder than I thought. So Amberly, I would love to know What are your favorite five? What are five things you are reading or watching or wearing right now that are your favorites? I love that. Well, first of all, 
Thank you for asking. I really appreciate this. And this was really fun. The first thing I'm going to say is uh, I do have curly hair. Um, and so uh, all my curly girl uh, friends who are listening to this can relate to this, but products are actually really hard for me to find that work for my hair, especially with all my traveling, because what happens in Columbus, Ohio is different than what happens in Prescott, Arizona, which is different than yes. what happens in Poto, Oklahoma. And so I often need to um, find something that works. There is a an over-the-counter, like you can get it at Walgreens, CVS, any of those places, called Miss Jessie's. Now, I have no idea what it would do to non-curly hair, but for me, it is fantastic. I super love it. I'm so thankful for it. I have a travel size in my bags when I go, um, but I love them, Miss Jessie. So that's one. Uh, two, I was given the gift. I love this so much. I was given a gift by a friend um, and it's called the Crossway uh, NIV. I use NIV New Testament. You can do it in a couple of different um, translations, but it is a separate notebook for each of the books in the New Testament, they have an Old Testament one as well. So that you're, it's like, here's the book of John and you read it. But then the rest of it is places for you to write all of your sermon notes. Like, so if your pastor is going through uh, you know, Ecclesiastes, you, you've got Ecclesiastes and then you've got all of these things. I just have the New Testament, but I love it it's so hard because it's all together. Um, and we all know if we're writing, we're learning more, which I think is fantastic. So I super yes, love it. I have notes down both sides of my Bible, but thank you. So now it would all be in one <laughs> place, which I super love. So there's that. So there's hair and there's scripture. I probably should have started with scripture if I was a good church lady, but I didn't, I didn't do it that way. No particular order. <laughs> okay, perfect. The next one is a food. I am a foodie and there is a hot sauce which is not like silly hot it's delicious hot called truff and it's based at truffle oil and i gave it as christmas gifts last year and my people went crazy like i had so many people are like okay so where did you i felt a little bit like a drug dealer like here here have a sample <laughs> of this um, but it is delightful, delicious to lovely. I put it on pho. I put it in our chicken noodle soup. I put it on scrambled eggs. It is, I never thought I was going to be a hot sauce person, but this one is especially delicious. And so, um, so there's that. So if there's hair, there's the scriptures, there's food, gotta love food. Um, also, where do we find the hot sauce before you move on? Oh, you could. I'm sure I know it. I know they have it on Amazon. That's how I purchased mine. I'm sure their place, William Sonoma, it's a little bougier as far as hot sauces go. So it's probably not in every place, but it is mwah, delish. Okay. Super good. I totally love it. Looking that up. The next thing that I would like to say is I am really enjoying uh, hiking these days. And I have a uh, skin cancer that runs in my family. My dad died of skin cancer when he was 51. My sister's had it. I mean, multiple family members, so I have to be really careful. And Columbia has a line of hiking shirts, and they're a little spendy. So I just wait till, like, end of season. And I buy them because they're SPF. They're not – I can – you can do short sleeve, but I do nice long sleeve. They are cool. They breathe. It feels great when I'm hiking because I'm fully covered, but I also don't feel uh, smothered uh, by the clothes, which I think is huge. So hiking shirts for sure is, is where it's at. And finally, uh, the next thing I would like to recommend is uh, starting a playlist. So um, I am not a country Western fan at all. In fact, I do not like it at all. And so many of my friends were saying, Amberly, it's like God and country and storytelling. There's nothing you shouldn't that, that you, you know, that you wouldn't like. And so I made the bold choice and I started a playlist called Country Jamberly, because my name is Amberly. And any time I would put it out on social media and say, okay, what country song needs to be on here? I mean, I almost was like gag reflex. Don't like it. <laughs> Don't like it. But I started and I have about probably six and a half hours worth of playlist. And when I'm walking the dog, uh, I play country music and I still cannot say on any level that I love it, but my country friends, if they say Travis Tritt or they say Cody Johnson, I actually know who those people are. So that's pretty cool. So I think just getting out of your norm, because if left up to me, it would be worship or eighties. Those, those are the two like lands I live in. Um, but this has been a really good thing for my brain to kind of explore new stories and dive into new things. And it takes very little effort to create a playlist. So, so that's going to be my number five. 
That is hilarious that you created a playlist of music that you don't really like. I know, I know. It's true. It's true. You did it for but, your friends. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, I, I am learning some new things. There have been a couple that have like take take like thrown me off guard emotionally. And I'll send it to the person saying, Hey, this song um like makes my allergies flare up. And they're like, What music makes your allergies flare up? And I'm like, no, I just can't bring myself to say, Hey, that song made me cry. <laughs> but it's good. So yeah. Those are terrific. Thank you for sharing. Oh, my pleasure. Amberly, do you have a final word of encouragement for us as we get a little deeper into this year and think about how we might want to focus on our friendships? Mm. I think I'm going to leave you with the words of Jesus because of course, of course, those are the best. But the whole idea of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think if we would look at that and re-examine that as uh, also a recipe for good community, to do unto others the way not only that we need it, but that they need it. So um, it's not just, hey, my favorite is chocolate chip cookies. So if I'm going to love on somebody, I'm going to bring them my favorite. But to know them enough and to do unto others as you would have them do unto you also means you want people to know you. And if you don't want nuts in that uh, chocolate chip cookie, or if you actually like white chocolate chip more than dark, you want people to know those things. And so I think getting to know what people need and and loving them well with the things they need, not just necessarily the things you need, I think uh, for me is a, is a clock cleaner. I need to be reminded, not that loving them the way you want with your chocolate chip cookie recipe is a bad thing, but I think going next level and really getting to know people because people are desperate for connection. We do all sorts of crazy things. We get on social media. We, we base our worth on people's likes. We watch television shows so that we feel like we have friendships. And the truth is, I feel so called to really serve and get to know other people and hopefully, uh, you know, reflect the fact that Jesus came and he got to know me and he served me exactly the way I needed, which is to die on the cross. And that we don't have to be that extreme, but we certainly can love people where they're at. What a great place to end. Amberly, you are amazing. This has oh, been wonderful. Thank you. I feel the same way about you. This has been such a treat. It has been wonderful to talk to you. And I feel like you are right where you're supposed to be, being funny, talking about the Lord, bringing in relationship and how we can just better connect with one another. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. What a gift you are. Thank you for listening. I love the suggestion Amberly gave of serving in the area you're passionate about in order to make friends. I can attest that this ministry has opened me up to lots of friendships I wouldn't have found otherwise. I also loved it when she talked about hospitality and asked, am I there for people who are having a rough time on their journey? Am I a safe place they can land? I'm asking myself the same thing. Are you? Find all the ways to connect with Amberly, plus links to her amazing Bible studies on friendship and her newest study, Untangling Faith, in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, let me know by leaving a five-star rating or writing a short review. I will see you back here in two weeks when we will be diving into a brand new series on anxiety. Friend, don't let the conversation stop when the show is over. Share your story and start your own conversations with the girls in your life. Thanks for tuning in.